welcome to the Couple to Couple League Peak Day podcast, where we discuss fertility and natural family planning with our friends. I'm your co-host, Martha Haney. And I'm your co-host, Alejandra Martinez. Today's guest is Erin Brooks. Erin is a student at Michigan Tech, working on her degree in psychology with a minor in behavior studies. And she also works with children with autism. Erin has a passion for sharing the knowledge of fertility with her fellow female college students and has a club of young women meeting regularly where they discuss their cycles and charting, and they also read and discuss material pertaining to their health and their faith. Welcome, Erin. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. How did you start uh, with your interest in um, helping uh, your fellow college students uh, to know their fertility a little bit better? It started with my roommate, my sophomore year of college. She's very uh, big into fertility awareness, very big. She's the driving force behind the group. I was the one with the time. Um, So she kind of opened the door and introduced me to fertility awareness and tracking. And we started doing it together and it was a lot of fun. We just kind of check in with each other, compare our charts, talk about it. Um, And then my junior year of college, I had a research project that I had to do um, up at Tech. We have a senior design where you design your own research project and then carry it out. Um, And being very active in my Catholic faith, I was like, well, I want to do something that pertains to the faith. I don't know how, because I'm going to a public institution, but how can I make it so it relates, kind of? And I was like, well, I really like tracking. I really like fertility awareness. Mm. So I proposed to my research advisor that I do, um, I design a course of kind of the natural fertility awareness without the theology in it and just present the facts and see what women thought and like whether they wanted to learn more like this or be on the birth control and just learn more about like how to prevent pregnancy and like how to deal with health issues as they arise. Um, And so I jumped into that and spent two semesters studying and researching, designing a course. And I just continued down that spiral of research and learning and I have fallen more and more in love with it. Can you tell me how your roommate was already connected with uh, the, the charting and the tracking? Um, her parents are actually instructors for Couple to Couple League. Oh, and are this they? was just her world. <laughs> was I bet it was. Yeah. For help. So she was like already doing it. She um, is also like me and that is very eager to find her own methods though. And like, so her parents learned Couple to Couple League. Uh, she went and she's like, well, I don't have the time, nor do I need to do this much. So she started on the FEM app and she has just used that because it's a little easier for college students to do quickly and Mm -hmm. we have so much going on. Um, Mm -hmm. So that was her interest. And now it's kind of something we just mutually bond over. Right, right. Did you know each other before you got to college or did you choose her as a particular roommate? Um, I met her my freshman year in the dorms and then we actually have a series of Catholic houses up here at Michigan Tech. Um, So we have three women's houses and three men's houses, um, all who are based on the premise of living an authentic Catholic life, but kind of in community together. So we spearheaded the third women's house and started that together. Um, And then when we moved to the house, they're small, so we ended up as roommates. What an interesting... uh way of reaching out to young women how have been the response to your invitation to learn more to learn more about their bodies it's been overwhelmingly positive and in that it's been a blast um we'll randomly there's a core group of us who will meet uh, and who have been consistently coming and the overwhelming response is why don't we learn this in elementary school or middle school? 
right. um, like, why is it college that we're now getting together? And like, instead of complaining about everything we experience throughout the course of a cycle, like actually walking with each other through it. Mm -hmm. um, so it's been very positive in that aspect. Um, it's also fun because there's such a core group of us that we can invite new people in um, and they don't come in and be like, this is a weird group that, <laughs> um, that they come in and they're like, wait, there's actually women who sit down and talk and share authentic experience. Why am I not doing this too? What are you finding out in this, in these conversations with them? Um, nothing mind blowing like that, but, um, just kind of that like, knowing that other people experience. So I personally have very painful periods. It's just something that I've grew up and it was always like, that's just how it is as a woman. And then I start researching and I'm like, no, it doesn't have to be this way. <laughs> like that, it doesn't have to be a PMS doesn't have to be like, oh, she's just PMSing, like brushed off. Like, no, these are authentic experiences that can actually be helped and like fixed, not like fixed, but like you can do certain things to alleviate some of the symptoms, but also like learning that other people experience this or don't experience what I'm experiencing and being able to share that kind of just helps. Um, it kind of helps you feel less like an island of a person mm -hmm. <laughs> and actually like, okay, I'm not crazy. I'm not that strange. This is just my experience of my fertility. What are Speaking of tracking, uh, nowadays we have a lot of apps in the market uh, uh, trying to help women. Do you think all this variety of different acts are helping the young women or they are confusing them more? I personally have found them helpful, but I never used, um, until college, I kind of just went with be surprised when it, my period shows up. Right. <laughs> um, so I never actually fell into like the apps that predict when your period comes. So my first experience was with a fertility tracking app, um, which then I've been able to introduce to many other people. And I find that very helpful. Um, and I understand for like the NFP purposes of having a paper chart and like actually spending the time to get to know how particular charts work. Um, but I think that tracking for family planning purposes and tracking for health don't have to be as the same. Um, mm -hmm. Like you can use the same methods, but tracking for health, you don't have to be quite as particular. Right. Um, and so especially for young women and college students, like the app is just very helpful because it can send me a reminder so that when I forget, even though it's something I do every day. I still kind of sometimes need that reminder to oh track what you see, track what you're feeling today. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think it's important to know like what apps are good and what apps are mm -hmm. like what apps are tracking what you're seeing and feeling and like experiencing and what ones are predicting. Right. So what have you thought so far about the Peak Day app? I personally really enjoy it. It's very easy to like it's aesthetically pleasing and then it's very easy to learn. Um, but I also appreciate that it puts the data into a chart that you actually would use physically. Also, it just provides so many prompts and things I wouldn't have considered otherwise. Okay. Yeah. Are you able to track a lot of your, um, the different symptoms that, that you were speaking about before? Mm -hmm. Yes. So it's very helpful to track those, um, the different symptoms and then it has I think it has a notes place so I'll yeah. sometimes write myself a note I'm like if it's something that's not quite what I can add in I can write myself a note on like mm -hmm. what in particular especially if it's been like something strange or uh, I've been sick for the last two weeks so <laughs> add right. that in yeah like, that makes a difference yep So uh, you mentioned that a lot of the women who come into your, your group say, why didn't we know this before we you know, got to college? Why didn't we learn it when we were younger? Um, 
how would you say that mothers could help their daughters when they are younger, when it comes to uh, learning about their cycles? I would say that young girls understand more than we give them credit for. Like we understand a lot and we want to know the particulars. Like we want to know why this is happening, not just that this is going to happen when we are about 13. Um, And I'm fully one who believes that you just talk to kids as you would an adult. They can understand a lot more. And if like, if not, it opens the door for them to ask questions in a safe place where they kind of feel that they're loved and respected with their mom Mm -hmm. or their siblings, their sisters. So I think that like not educating mothers to know exactly what's happening and providing them the skills to teach that exact same thing, but to younger girls would be very beneficial. And like just being able to say that this period's not happening as a problem it's like not a fault of your own but it's also like a gift and it's like Mm -hmm. everything is functioning correctly when you get it (laughs) it's perfectly normal and it will happen like here's what's happening and here's how you can understand how your mood will work a little Mm -hmm. and just giving them just a little bit it doesn't need to be like an overload it don't be a a course on how to do it properly just a little bit of information right to help them like remove the mystery of what is their body Mm. every woman deserves to know about her body it doesn't have anything to do with your faith or your religion um or your beliefs Uh, every woman has you know all the womanly things that happen to her body that they really should understand why it's happening i took an anatomy and physiology class last year on at school and I was like so excited because we were just going to talk about like the reproductive systems and we got through the male reproductive system and then we ran out of time and like just didn't touch on the women's at all. And I was like, oh. Oh. <laughs> I'm like in the middle of making a course and so I was like really excited to have go to class so I could get like learn so that I could put that in my uh, the course I made for my research study. And I was just so disappointed. And I was like, I was so excited to learn about like, right. like in a public school setting about the hormones in a woman's body and like not have to do my own research. And I was very, very disappointed that that did not happen. I bet. I bet. Was it actually in the uh, the textbook though? It was. Mm-hmm. So I did get to use the textbook a lot. Oh, good. But even in the textbook, they word it like it's a disease and I'm just. Oh, really? So I was like, yeah, they worded it. At least in a way that made it seem like this is not normal. And I'm like, oh. that is what the body is supposed to be doing. <laughs> That's oh, it. Wow. What a disservice to women. Yes. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about how you um, became involved with the Couple to Couple League. How did you um, meet up? Um, I met up. I met Dr. Man- Mike Manhart at the Catholic Medical Association conference in Denver, Colorado. Um, I, as I said before, I did a research project um, in college. I researched women's perspective and thoughts on uh, a fertility awareness course. Um, And then I presented that at the conference. And then through that connection, I sent him my research paper, more information that I of what I had done and he was able to put me in contact with the executive director of the couple the couple league um and so I met up and interviewed there and then they hired me to help create a young a course specifically targeted for young adults and young women um kind of branching off of what I'd done for my research project and taking it to a new level to think of the words behind it. So what are we gonna teach in each course and what is gonna be, how are we gonna present it? What method and like, what is the creative idea behind it? So I've been tied up with that for the last couple of months. What do you think is the importance of this project nowadays? The importance of this project is I think it will be that concise course that I was looking for for young women 
Um, so I made a three module course. It was very brief. I just like touched the surface. So I think this will be the step deeper and it will provide women with the information and the tools they need to best track for their own health. Um, and then also provide like the platform for a community because finding it and having it in your like in your immediate community is very unique um and it's and like a special experience to have up here at tech but to have that community somewhere else when i'm not here with these women so to be able to find a online community um so we're ha hoping to have like a discussion platform and on the course so that um people can share their experiences so my favorite quote is by I think Pope Paul the sixth is that people listen better to witnesses than teachers and if they listen to teachers it's because they were first witnesses um, and that's my favorite quote it's also very applicable to my life and I think everybody's lives is we can't make much of a difference if we're just trying to instruct people and not actually practicing and living out what we are teaching whether it's trying to teach people a fertility awareness method or just trying to show somebody like how we live our Catholic faith. It's better to show them that it's important to go to mass and I go to mass on Sunday and I also go on Wednesday and all throughout the week. It's important to have a prayer life and therefore I'll go to adoration. Like letting them see me live out that witness is much more effective than just talking to people. <laughs> Thank you, Erin, for joining us on the Peak Day podcast. We've enjoyed our talk with you, and we hope and um, we hope you have uh, many more great experiences, uh, especially with the uh, you know the things that you're so passionate about. So, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you us. for having me.